at 571. It's Den Leader Doug here, and I'm coming to you with this week's Scout Update. Hey Scouts, I'm back out here in the workshop and we're talking about the Pinewood Derby. Hopefully by now you've all had a chance to pick up your Pinewood Derby car kit, but even if you haven't, that's okay. You can pick one up at one of the cut days. Today, we're gonna talk about design. How do you design your Pinewood Derby car? Now you don't need your car kit for this. In fact, you can do all of this on paper and we recommend you do this on paper. The first thing you want to do is print out the wheelbase pattern that was attached in the Pinewood Derby email. If you don't have that email, the link is right here on the screen. Go ahead and download that PDF document and print it as actual size. That's very important because when you print it as actual size, the wheelbase pattern matches the wood block in your car kit exactly. One of the best things you can do for inspiration when you're thinking about your Pinewood Derby design is Assuming you have your cyber chip and your parents' permission, go on the internet and search for Pinewood Derby Car Designs. And click on the Images tab and you can see lots of different designs that people have come up with. Some of them look a lot like cars or race cars. Some of them look nothing like cars. In fact, some of them look like uh, animals or objects or anything you can imagine. It's entirely up to you what you want your Pinewood Derby car to look like. The important things to remember when you're designing your Pinewood Derby car is it has to fit on the track and it has to abide by the rules of the race. Now the rules document was attached to the email that was sent out uh, announcing the Pinewood Derby, but let me go over a couple key things. Your Pinewood Derby car cannot be any wider than two and three quarter inches and that's so it fits in its own track. Its maximum length is seven inches. It can't be any longer than seven inches. The front of your Pinewood Derby car has to be flat. And the reason for that is at the starting line, there's a pin that holds all the cars in place and your car has to go up against that pin. That also means you can't have an inverted V design where the pin goes in between because that gives your car a head start. So the front of your car has to be flat so it bumps up against that pin. Then when the race starts, the pin drops and all the cars move. The next thing you need to know is your car can't weigh any more than five ounces. That is the maximum weight. And when you turn your car in, we will weigh your car to ensure that it doesn't go above five ounces. If it's 5.01, that's too heavy and we'll ask you to do something to reduce the weight to under five ounces. You want your car as close to five ounces as possible without going over. The more your car weighs, the faster it will go. But there is a limit five ounces. We'll talk more about how to get your best car weight and your best car performance in an upcoming video about performance tips and tricks for your car. Your car also has to have at least one and three quarter inch width at the axle. That means the wheels can't be any closer together than one and three quarters inch. And the reason for that is the track has a ridge in the middle that keeps your car in its lane and your wheels have to be at least a little bit wider than that ridge. So one and three quarter inch is the minimum distance apart, nothing closer. You also need to have three eighths of an inch clearance. In other words, the distance between the ground and the bottom of your car is no less than three eighths of an inch. Uh, and that again is for that ridge in the middle of the track for your car to run right over that ridge without touching it. The wheels should give you just enough clearance, but if you put anything on the bottom of the car, you risk uh, ruining that clearance. So just be very careful if you put anything on the bottom of the car uh, that you make sure you give yourself three eighths of an inch of clearance. When you're using the standard wheelbase design, uh, it's worth noting that you can see where the wheels go on the wood block. And in fact, if I take my wood block and place it on the design, you can see it's the exact size and the wheels go exactly where the slots are cut for my axle. Now you'll notice that the axle slots are not even. One side is longer and the other side is shorter. You can make whichever side you want be the front or the back. That's entirely up to you. So you could have a, a long nose with your wheels towards the back or your wheels towards the front with a long back end. So when you're ready to design your car, uh, the most important thing is that we design this wheelbase pattern sheet so that we're ready for cut day. And the way we do that is we put our design on the sheet and then we actually tape the sheet 
onto the wooden block and that's how we cut it. Uh, so the design pattern will be really important when you come to cut day. So for example, I might decide that if I want to do something like the, the Batmobile concept, I might decide that I want to um, cut the body in. And by the way, I'm using a pen here just so you can see it better, but I would recommend a pencil. But I might decide I want to cut the body in a little bit like this, make it really skinny in the middle, and then uh, also make it kind of skinny at the front. But again, remember you have to have a flat front. So make sure you keep that flat front. And then maybe I wanna taper off the ends a little bit. And now I know where I'm gonna cut. So that means all this wood's gonna be cut away. And I'm gonna end up with a car that's skinny in the middle with the wide wheelbase. And remember, we wanna make sure we have enough room under that wheelbase for the track. Now that might be what it looks like from the top. So when I tape this on, then I can just cut this design according to how it's taped on. I might also want to design a side view, how I want to cut the side view. So for instance, uh, with this design, I might want to say uh, the cockpit is way, way at the back. And so I'm going to have the cockpit be kind of tall like this and round it off at the end. And then I'm going to have this work its way down like so. And again, then when I tape this on, we'll end up cutting away a bunch of the wood. So everything here will be cut off, but I still have room for my axles and I still have room to add some weight and do some different things. So I went ahead and cut out the top design. So now I can take my wood block and you'll notice I used a pencil just to put a couple lines on here where the axles go. So I make sure I put this on the right way. Cause if I wanted my axles there and I put this on the wrong way, that might mess up my design. So this way I know where the axles go and then I can just tape this onto the top of my wood and bring it to cut day. And then at cut day, what we'll do is we'll use a bandsaw and we'll just cut right along where these lines are exactly how you have them. So we'll cut the corners off and we'll cut these pieces out. Once your car has been cut, it's up to you to finish that, which means doing some sanding to smooth it out, painting to match your design, uh, and following some of the performance tips that we'll give you in an upcoming video to ensure your car is as fast as it can be. We want this to be a fun and fast race for everybody. All right, Scouts, that's all for this week's Scout Update. I'm Den Leader Doug. As always, do your best, and we'll see you next time.